All right. Going live on video. Stand by for audio. All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. Uh, so this evening, once again, I'm bringing on yet another new guest co-host for you guys. The show never slows down. Our list of new guest co-hosts never seems to shrink. Uh, but before I dive into our bio, I just want to remind you guys, podcasts are free, especially this show. I've never monetized it. So the one thing I want to remind you guys that I've not been doing a good job with is please go online to iTunes and hook our show up with a review because I would like to read your reviews on these shows in the future and we could use a few more of them. So I don't really ask enough, but that's how we're going to grow the show. That's how we're going to grow the audience continuously. And it's just an appreciation for the fact that I've never bothered you with paid commercials. <laughs> All right, guys. So without further ado, your new guest co-host today. She's a facilitator, certified bounce back better trainer. Say that three times fast. <laughs> flourishing coach, positive psychology practitioner. You know how much I'm passionate about psychology. Uh, and she works with individuals and organizations to bring to light the best versions of themselves. She believes that people can flourish through more meaningful relationships and by being their own, I love this, Chief Energy Officer. That's right, CEO. Nice little spin. Mine's Chief Intrepid Officer, and I capitalize the E in Intrepid. So without further ado, <laughs> welcome to the show, the founder of The Running Lifestyle, fellow podcaster, Carrie Gorman. Hi, Scott. Thanks for welcome, having welcome. me here. Thank you. And uh, we were just joking around before we fired up the show because we haven't like hardcore chatted uh, since the MMI event, So that which we found out about because of the other Tony Robbins event, right? I think that's how we all kind of ended up there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. so can't keep up with all that stuff. So, uh, but anyway, so yeah, that's right. Because we were also at the Philadelphia event, the same Philadelphia event, right? We just didn't go. Yeah, we didn't exactly. Actually then. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so welcome, welcome. It's, it's great that we're finally connecting up. I, uh, to be completely transparent, was stuck in so much traffic on the way home from some business travel that I was wondering if I was going to get here on time. I literally walked in two minutes before opening the Zoom link. So, but I planned ahead for you. I made sure I left my computer and everything ready to rock. So when I got nice. home, all I had to do was turn it on. So very nice planning. All Sometimes. right. Future Sometimes. self. <laughs> what would future self want? That's great. I like that. Yeah. Is it when you do these things like, oh, I don't feel like putting stuff away. So future self's going to be really happy when you what can find What would future this. self want? I want a steak. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do after this. After you and I record tonight, I'm going to go grill a steak. That's what I'm going to do. That's what my future self good. wants right now. It sounds good. So yeah, yeah, so how you been? Good, good. Things are good. Speaking of dinner, I actually have a, um, a paleo, no, what is it? Um, Whole30 friendly chicken soup in the Instapot going right now. Although I think- I've been back and yeah. forth on whether or not to get the Instapot. Uh, I think mine's on the fritz right now. We just we 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 just rocked the crock pot, but everybody yeah. like my my friend, she has a I, I highly recommend her cookbook for you uh, is the the Eat Happy Cookbook. It's oh. it's all sugar free, grain free recipes. Shout out to Anna Vocino, who's the voiceover on my show. She does the intro and outro. Yes, so, yeah. Uh, she's a, she, well, that's her major career. She's like a legit professional voiceover artist. Like she she's the voice of. I think it's ABC or NBC. Yeah, yeah. She's actually been on the podcast, my podcast. Oh, so you know Anna, yeah. Yeah, and Anna's you don't sweet. have her cookbook? I do have her cookbook, actually. Oh, as I already pre-bought pre the next one. Oh, the next one. oh, she has another one coming out. Oh, good yeah. job, Anna. It's going to be called Eat Happy 2, T-O-O. -O, so. Nice. Oh, you that's great. That I'll drop Amazon, her yeah. a note. Yeah, she worked so hard on that. Actually, on the, gosh, when she was on the podcast, I asked her about, because it was such a journey, and asked her, you know, what would she have done differently? And um, it's so, it's wonderful to hear she has another one coming out. Yeah, she's been working on that a while. She was hoping to actually have it out by now, and she had to keep pushing it back, pushing it back. And you know her. She cares yes. about, like, she became her own self-study as a, I mean, classic example of entrepreneurs, right? Like, or, or yeah. the side hustle entrepreneurs is that she didn't want to spend a lot of money on a photographer. And she's the one who wanted to test every single recipe because she suffers from celiac disease. That's why she does live the NSNG lifestyle, no sugar, no grains. That's why that cookbook is created. So that's for the newer listeners who are hearing this right now. So she said, well, I'm just going to photograph them all as I go. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. So, and she, she's, by the way, got a, a little talent there. 
So. Oh, she's a great voiceover artist. It's yeah. exciting when you hear her too. Um, we, we just used one of her recipes this weekend. I hosted my annual, uh, it's a big uh, ski and snowboard tuning party because the, the, the season's kicking oh. into gear here. So everybody comes over with their equipment and we sharpen and wax uh, in my garage. I fire up the grill. We bring over crock pots. Everybody's just hanging out. Um, this year I actually... Uh, high tech the garage and installed a TV and internet Wi Fi out there and everything else. We were, wow. we were, we were streaming uh, ski videos uh, for people who weren't tuning skis. So, uh, yeah, a little fancier this year. <laughs> cool. I have a question for you because um, we live kind of in the same neck of the woods. I'm in Wilmington, Delaware, and just over the border. I can just over the border. Just like I consider myself a suburb of Philly. And you just have a few more tax advantages. Just. Yes, yes, although we pay private schools for private schools. But anyway, um, that's a big thing, Delaware and Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, but anyway, um, yes, so my son, who's 11, wants to learn how to ski. And he is like full on energy, get me on the fastest roller coaster. I mean, full on. And so I wonder, any suggestions? Uh, and my husband and I, we kind of skied, but we're not really into it. I mean, I, I worked with a race team for 11 years, so. Okay, so you know, things. What, what, I know what, skiing. Yeah, you know skiing. <laughs> a couple things, just a couple. So. What would you want a parent to know, you know, for an 11-year-old, what to do, what not to do? How Don't do teach your own kid. Well, we can't. So <laughs> well, there you go. Well, I mean, yeah, but yeah. I'm serious. So you, you, yes. you, this is. Ladies and gentlemen, hearing this right now, doesn't matter if it's your kid or especially your significant other. <laughs> there are professionals that exist in this world, especially sports, for a reason. Pony up a couple of dollars and pay for a professional. Uh, I have to get that out there because it is hilarious. I can tell you how many years I'm riding a ski chair with some of my athletes and I'm just looking down and I, I can tell when that young couple like the one guy or the one girl, usually it's the guy, it's always us. You know, we think we know everything <laughs> and you're trying to help that new girlfriend or that significant other improve on their technique or at least survive the bunny hill. And it's just crashing and burning. You can see the frustration in the significant other's face, possible tears, tuck, tucking and tumbling. And it's quality entertainment as a professional. <laughs> but, and then I just want to yell down. I'm like, Hire an instructor, yeah. save your relationship. So <laughs> I just had to share that. But in your case, uh, most mountains have a, they all, they all call them something different. They call them like a, a Tykes program or I mean, how old's your kid? 11. Oh yeah. So he's, he's more than older. Has he ever been on skis? No, actually now that you mention it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well then, uh, is there a mountain? I don't even know Delaware. I mean, no, I, someone said we should go to Blue Mountain, I think is the question. Yeah, that's, that's the mountain we ski up. Yeah, so yeah, I think I mean, we'll take them there. I, I used to coach at, at Camelback Mountain, which is in the legit oh, yeah. Poconos. Um, yeah. But from your direction, well, hold on. You know, I will give a little shout out to Bear. Bear Creek is a good mountain mm -hmm. too. It's more of a hill than a mountain, but it's closer for you. Okay. You do have to drive a little bit further to get to Blue, but the... Uh, it's gorgeous. They have a beautiful, they built an amazing hotel. Like, so they do a lot of events there because they spent more money on the, on the hotel than the hill. <laughs> um, cause it's not a legit. Um, yeah, because that's like, fine. Well, because like blue mountain is actually on the Appalachian trail. Like the Appalachian trail goes, that's how hot. So you have a good, at least a thousand feet of vertical feet. So for here in Pennsylvania, that's nice. Like they have some big, they have for, again, for Pennsylvania, they have some good size long runs and they have some good pitches. So I do obviously recommend blue as a more well-rounded mountain. Um, but Bear Creek is gorgeous because they have the hotel. So if you wanted to make a weekend of it and you want to stay up here and feel like you're kind of getting a little weekend getaway, I would go Bear because blue mountain doesn't have a hotel. They keep talking about building one. Right. Uh, but I mean, they have a lodge, but it's not, you can't stay there. You'd have to like, do the hotel thing. And I don't know, are you, are you guys considering doing a complete up and back in the same day? Are you trying to make a thing yeah, of it? Yeah, potentially. My husband and I don't like the cold weather, so we'd rather like spend the time going See, to- See, this is why you should go to Bear Creek then. Yeah. So that's, that way you yeah. reward yourselves and you stick the kid in, the, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a class, you know, in a, uh, with an instructor. Because they do have some group lessons right. and they also have the one-on-ones. Um, for a newbie who's 11, 
they're going to respect an instructor before they're going to respect you anyway, even if you did know how to ski. So hands down, you could put him in a, in a, in a two days of training, like a Saturday and a Sunday and you guys right. go hang out. Like, you know, they've got hot tubs at the hotel and everything else. They, you know, throughout the year they host at Bear, this Bear Creek, obviously uh, they host uh, wine events there and beer tastings and wine tastings and cheese festivals. Cause it's such a really nice hotel. So, uh, and they built it because they wanted to tap into that Philadelphia market. Sure, because, sure. Yeah. Uh, they were trying to basically get you to get off the highway before going all the way to Blue Mountain. So, uh, Good to know. Thank you. We'll have yeah. to check it out. Yeah. I mean, because you can get right off of the Allentown exit off of the Turnpike, the PA Turnpike Northeast, 476. Shoots straight from Philadelphia uh, right up to where we're at. And, and obviously, obviously, when you do this, like, give me a heads up. I mean, I, I'm, not a, I don't, I'm not a kiddo guy, but... You know, my fiance and I like a glass of wine. If you need to have some adult time, yeah, you know, yeah, I can help you out. This is our this is our neck of the woods. Your neck of the woods. Yeah. Okay, that's that sounds good. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah, Maybe bring so, a travel mic or something. I I have I have four extra mics. I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I have a travel kit as well. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. So I, I love I love hearing the kids want to get into it. Skiing has gotten more popular again, uh, thanks to the Olympics and all the amazing uh, guys from the X Games. You see more guys ripping, ripping crazy stunts on skis again, not just the snowboarders. So it's interesting. Sure. I've actually seen some of my snowboarding friends start skiing again. Very interesting. interesting. Yeah. So, um, so I, I, I will tell you, he'll, the first few times told me he might, depending on how athletic he is, he'll be frustrated, but maybe not. I don't know. He might take to it like, boom, ready to rock. So, yeah. Well, the see, he's. How's he with other sports? Yeah. So he's more of a karate kid, individual sports karate. And oh, like me. I, I grew up doing that. Yeah. 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 He's destined. He really wants to get uh, his. I started karate. Out. So, what's what style? I was showing Rue, Okinawan based. You, no. Come on, mom. I don't. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I don't. Maybe if you named name name some more, I might recognize it. It's okay. It, 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 there's so many Seriously, different. Though, now I want to know. Um, I mean, it depends on the dojo. I mean, it, do they call themselves a karate academy? Do they call them a karate school? Karate school. Martial arts. So no karate, but they do. Yeah, they do do, do their. You have, do you have too. more of a focus on? Is it well rounded? Do they focus more on taekwondo? Do they focus more on like grappling? Are they focus focus more on kung fu? I mean, I think it's well-rounded and then they have sparring gear and they do sparring for the last 15 minutes of a 45 minute class. Okay. I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah. It's, it sounds like a good one. Is it keto? Thing. Does a keto sound right? A keto is, is another a form of martial art. I wouldn't call that a karate, no. but then okay. again, no. it depends oh, no, 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 on what no, their marketing is. That's the gentle one, isn't it? A keto? Uh, it's that's more well, wellness minded, but um, like where, where's the karate school at? It's in Wilmington. We'll have to check it out. Huh. I'll get back to you and let you know what it is. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't mean to call you out on your own child's karate school, but uh, uh, do you know? The, do you know what? I'll, I'll Google it right now. What, what? You know what street they're on? Um, you know, I, I try to keep it on the the QT. Like, oh, okay, yeah, don't worry about it. So, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I just Googled karate school in Wilmington, Delaware, and a whole bunch of red dots popped up. So there's plenty down there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it, long story short. I, I, I'm glad you're putting him through that or he loves it because it yes. taught me a lot. I was a wild, wild child and didn't find a lot of focus and, and I, I didn't keep it going throughout the rest of my life. I think I stopped by the time college started because I was, I was paying my own way through school, was working full time, trying to do, wow. I, mean, yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, where am I, well, how am I going to squeeze that in? So, right, right. So, but I loved it and I did a few tournaments and, you know, won a few trophies over the years and stuff like that. So. Yeah, but I didn't stay in it long enough to get the black belt. So would have been a nice little checklist. Is he a black yeah. belt? Yet? Not yet, but okay. he's getting, he's actually getting his, he's the brown belt and now he's getting another level. And stripe. I think he's three, yeah, another, yeah. And like then, I know my school, it was always three stripe ranks and then you would graduate to the actual next belt color. So I was green. I forget how many stripes. I, I might have been two or three stripe green, and I was supposed to get my brown when I, you know, resigned. So, mm. uh, but anyway. Yeah, there aren't a lot of kids. Like looking at the who he started out with, it really dwindles. That's for no. sure. Well, I mean, for our listeners' benefit, 
we lo- clearly we're already hitting on this is clearly ladies and gentlemen a more healthy lifestyle themed podcast we've already talked about skiing uh nsng no sugar no grains e happy cookbooks from anna Pacino. we've talked about uh now karate uh for youth sports uh but most importantly i love the fact of your brand that i hinted at. i don't get a little screen share for the video people the running lifestyle and i love this brand because you and i chatted you don't run as much anymore Am yeah. I correct on that? Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. So I did remember. I'm proud of it. I said I'm proud of it, but uh, I had some, a come to Jesus moment with my uh, PT. And, um, but that's so okay, I'm, though, because oh, you, you still are passionate about the running lifestyle. Yes, yeah. yes. I am passionate about, you know, it's funny, it evolves over time. What I love about running is for people who are kind of high strong, high energy, like both of us. Um, is this idea that calms you down and you're able to maybe re- uh, get rid of some anxiety or reduce anxiety. Now, because of many injuries and in running six marathons, I'm more interested in, okay, how can I be a stronger athlete? So if I want to go run a 5K, I can do it. And not for a while, I was really pushing myself so I could be a marathon maniac and fundraising. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was too much. So I, I like to say I have a kinder, gentler I like the mar- the the marathon maniac. That's that's a good one. I like that. Oh, you had Mel Robbins, or did you? No, no. Oh. I talked about her five second. Row. I was gonna be so jealous. I have her book. I've talked about the five oh, second. Yeah. Will highly recommend that. Sorry, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. I'm screen sharing and I'm scrolling through some of her podcast history. And yeah, quick shout I, out to the yeah. Mel Robbins book. Five second rule is a great light yeah. read. But yes, not very impacting. Yeah, I would recommend the audio version because she, I don't want to say obviously, but she does it. And oh, yeah, I bought I, the physical just for yeah. the library. I'm an audible book right. all day long. <laughs> yeah, I really, I love those books too where you get the audio. I, so I go back and forth, but I love the ones where you get the audio and you're like, I need to get the physical. I just right. read a book called um, Make Time and it's written by Jake Knapp and... Mm-hmm. Jay-Z, I, not the Jay-Z, but oh, the same. That'd be uh, yeah, fun. yeah, no, but they call him Jay-Z and it's a follow-up to a really great business book called um, Sprint and it's basically both guys are at Google and how they help company, how they help Google Ventures, which is the, the side of Google that invests in other companies, how they go into a company they invested in and say, okay, in a week, we are going to come up with a problem that we can solve. We're going to prototype it. And on Friday, we're testing it. So we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time. It's so they go through the process. And you can do this in a company. You can do it in your life. You can do it in your side hustle. It's a really great book. It was a New York Times bestseller, in fact. And then they had this follow-up book, which basically shows how they were able to, through the books and through being very smart about their time, basically leave Google and Jay-Z, I, I wish I remembered his name, Zorowski, Zeros- Z- John Zorowski, there we go. Okay. John Zorowski, how he was basically able to go and he now is kind of like retired, but he maybe go back, leave sales. And then Jake Knapp is a dad and he has left Google and does basically, he has a podcast, but he does, sounds like trainings on the sprint process, which is pretty mm. cool. Well, if you, once you have a proven protocol or a proven process, I mean, next thing, next thing is, okay, do you monetize it? Do you share it? I mean, yeah, clearly made some positive impacts. So huge. Yeah. They were actually saying that, uh, I can't remember what big consulting firm, but they actually have a product now, like a sprint where basically, no, they, granted they were doing it before, but it's really great. I used it in a company that I was um, working with and it, it's, it's really great. And I really like their book because they give you like 85, it's um, probably going to be the book of a month for the running lifestyle show, I have books of the month. And what I really like about it is it gave you, gave you all these different ideas. One thing I'm working on, um, haven't done it yet, but actually taking email off my phone. Now, uh, yes, I, that, that hack yeah. has been brought up many, many times. Uh, by, on, on your podcast? Nah, not just my podcast. This, I, I was crushing two audio books today and um, people talk about the unplug factor. You know, there's like everybody has a different term for it, but the point is like, why? Who told you you had to be on top of your email that much? And psychologically, it is an energy suck. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I know you care a lot about energy. So yes. <laughs> and actually, hold on. Let me see a second part of your bio. Uh, you yes, you love about energy management programs. So that's what I'm saying. I, I remember you and I geeking out about energy. So yes. There at the event because energy is crucial. 
And if you take care of your energy, it truly could be limitless. But most of us have, have allowed so many speed bumps into our lives that it's hard, to, it's hard to hit that flow state because we've created all of these blocks um, that's in, impairing our, I, I like to call it the flow state, the free of your energy. Right, right. What do you think yeah. about that? Um, I, well, first of all, I love flow. And side note, Stephen Kotler, who's written books about flow, has been on the podcast, on my podcast. Um, it, you know, in the end of the day, it's not, there's some famous quote, it's, it's not about um, the years in your life, but or the, how many years you live, but how many, how much life you had into your years. And so I have found that I'm a much better podcaster, coach, facilitator, wife, mother, daughter, sister, when I'm very strategic about my time and, and timing things based on my chronotype. Um, mm. I heard your, your interview with James Swanick, your second one, and I, you guys briefly talked about your energy and knowing your, your chronotype, and it makes a huge difference. Hmm. What we're doing well, right now- let's, let's pause on that. People are hearing chronotype. They'll be like, whoa, what's, yeah. that, what's that buzzword? Uh, right, so right, let, right. Let, let's define that. <laughs> yes, so chronotype, this is exciting. In fact, the, uh, some researchers got a Nobel Prize a couple of years ago for chronotypes. So chronotypes are basically how your body is wired. So this idea that you're either a night owl or early bird, like that is true. And you know those people that they go to a movie at night and they may fall asleep and it's only 9.30, mm -hmm. but you talk to them in the morning and they're ready to go. They're in your face and you're like, back off. That's me. And so um, there's a doctor, Dr. Michael Bruce, who was on the podcast too. And he, um, it, it was really poignant. What he said, and this really struck me, is that he is a psychologist and he went and became a sleep doctor because he said, I can help people much faster being a sleep doctor than a psychologist. And mm. I have to say, yeah, because what happens when you're not sleeping well? I mean, um, lots of things. Your life. circadian rhythm is thrown off. Your stress levels are at a higher rate. You're not recovering properly. I can geek out about that. I mean. Yeah, it's, it's huge. And so it's, it's, it's understanding how you're wired and optimizing that time. Did I, you know your DNA also can tell you this? Oh, very cool. Well, they, well that makes I sense. I discovered that. Yeah. Uh, thanks to shout out to Dr. Anthony J, who's been on the show multiple times. He's a geneticist and he's yeah. doing, he's doing work with the Mayo Clinic right now, but he, he had, uh, he took, I exported the raw data file from 23andMe from my yeah. account. And then he goes and does a deep dive into your, all of your DNA data. Uh, so like, like for example, one of the hacks is don't pay 23andMe for the health and the genealogy. He said, just, just get the genealogy. It's a cheap, you want like 40 bucks or whatever, uh -huh. because no matter what the data is there, because they, they take your swab and they do the full DNA analysis. So all the yeah. data is sitting there in the website. It's just, you didn't pay for their reports to see what they think of it. So he's like, Scott, just okay. export the raw data and I'll do what I do. And that's a paid service he does for people, but he will do a right. deep dive in your DNA and give you a health uh, supplemental and, uh, the chemicals to avoid analysis. And part of that, he came out, he's like, Oh, did you know you had this marker, which states that you perform better at night? Interesting. Have you, have you been a night owl? Like in college, would you be, you know, up through the night? It's funny because I've, I also believe in reprogramming and I've done it all. I, I could be up late and performing. I could be, I was up at six o'clock this morning, the past three mornings. So it's like, I, I've, I'm more of a morning guy these days, but if I wanted to be up late and keep crushing it, I can. So it's weird. I, I yeah. told him that. I was like, I live in both worlds. And he's like, oh, he's like, it's just a marker. He said, and yes, right. you, there are, people are capable of you know, tweaking and modifying your, your DNA to a certain point. Uh, you, know, you still can't undo millions of years of programming, right? So uh, I, can get a, I can geek out on the whole uh, vegan thing, but that's a whole different uh, conversation. <laughs> I, I respect people's life choices. Oh um, my gosh. But, but at, at, the, at the DNA level, we are not coded to be that way. Uh, the only way people can even survive right now as vegans is thanks to modern day supplementation. It's just not a whole solution. Yeah. So. I, I have mad respect for vegans because I do understand from an environmental global warming standpoint, like, whoa, I, I get it. And it's scary what their predictions are. 
Um, Which that's also jaded data as well, because I could show you the other studies that prove that their lifestyle is actually the problem. <laughs> that's that's it. very oh, yeah. interesting. Well, I would okay. I would like. I would love to see. There's that. always My, two sides to the study. Very it's just, true. It's very just true. are they sharing the other side? So true. Right? <laughs> isn't Catch that me. the truth? And isn't that the beauty of podcasts? Seriously, mm -hmm. there are books out there that major news publications won't touch. But because of podcasts and that they get shared, and it still that's goes one thing I, I respect about podcasts, your podcast, my podcast, others that I've been on is like we have a choice to be true, true and transparent. And if I choose, I mean, like that's why that's why I really try not to talk about politics and religion on my show. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's enough people talking about it. I don't want to even yeah. get into that. I'd rather focus on bringing to light these amazing books that I might've consumed or you might've consumed or these studies we're talking about now about energy and flow and, and people are hearing this and like, Oh, there's such a thing as a flow state. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. So flow is defined as where what you're doing is just a little bit past where, where you're competent and you're just sucked in time disappears and you're alive. And it's, it's something really important to look at because and it feels like another life. Um, after college, I actually worked for an American software company in Sweden selling mechanical engineering software to Swedish engineers and all around Scandinavia. And it was, it was, it was hard and it was not my arena. Hmm. But what was, so, um, what was so interesting about it though is it really gave me an opportunity to figure out this isn't like my passion in life. And now when I'm working with post psychology and reading certain books, like I am in the flow, you have to like rip me away from what I'm doing and flow, you know, you've hit something where you're succeeding and you really like, you feel like what you're doing, you're just wrapped up. You can't help yourself. I mean, there are times, um, <laughs> as a mom, as a wife, where if I'm reading a page turner, nonfiction psychology book. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd rather read the book than go, I don't know, walk to the park or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. If you're really tied into the content, sure. I mean, when you yeah. find that right stuff, I mean, that's like, um, I, I just finished writing my first book, right? So now I'm moving. Oh, into congratulations. Wow. And, and I'm not. I, it's, that's dang, huge. It's, it's, it's a big move. It is. It I, is. I actually had my coaching call with my, my, my author coach today and he's just like, you haven't moved fast enough on your editing. I'm like, well, the writing part was easier because I actually didn't write it. I voice transcribed it. <laughs> so, because oh, I have no problem talking. What did you use for that? Uh, the otter.ai app, O-T-T-E-R, -O like the animal. Yeah. And AI is an artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it. So, because like oh, while I'm traveling, cool. like I was on a three hour yeah. road trip and I'd be listening to a podcast or an audio book and then all of a sudden an idea would pop in my head for a yeah. chapter for the book. So I'll just hit pause, turn the app on, and it's Bluetooth through my car stereo. So I just started recording while I'm driving. Ah, oh, so you have just made my day. Oh, it yeah. was already made already. This I day. love sharing this hack. It's awesome because- Oh my gosh, yes. I got, I got so good at it. I figured out that if I could keep recording for 10 to 15 minutes, 15 is on the high end, really 10 to 15, 10 to 12 was a sweet spot. If I can get a good flow for that yes. range- Yes. I could bang out a whole chapter. That's at least a thousand words was the way the math worked out the way I speak. So uh, now granted, my editing is gonna be a little bit more of a struggle because I have to, I phase one is spell check, then grammar check. And then I got to do twice as much structure work, right? Because right. I, didn't, I didn't write it or type it. So I, I wasn't already putting stuff into paragraph form. Um, and, and you can, when you export the data, because that's the beauty, you, you get done recording and then it processes it. And then it, you have a text file in the app. And then you just, I just export the text file and then I open it in Word and I've got, so I have, I have a Word doc for every single chapter, so. Right, right, and then you can just, yeah, yeah. consolidate. Well, here's and, the other hack. Yes, please. I now use otter.ai for my podcast. So when, no I get my, when I get my file back from my editor that has the intro outro on it, I take the, I take the audio file and I upload yeah. it into Otter. Otter processes it and now I've got the entire episode in text form for the ah. blog notes. This is like an orgasm for a podcast. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You got two podcasters like, oh, oh my God. Oh my gosh. And I think with ADHD, I don't know. Do you have ADHD? 
Maybe some people, I, I, I like to call that high performance. So it is, uh, hey, it's a gift. It's a gift. Again, it's flow. I why you spotlight. I, real, I realized that show notes for my podcast on the website are important, right? I know as a marketer, yes. as a marketer, I know yeah. you got to have content, but I was not going to transcribe a show. No. Uh, now I can. And here's the best part you're going to love. The Otter.ai app gives you 600 minutes of transcription for free every month. I still haven't paid for the app yet. Nice. And then if you pay for it, it's like 80 bucks for the year. Oh, it's, it's stupid. Wow. And you get like now thousands every month or whatever it is. I haven't, even, I just have, so I'm still dabbling in the podcast stuff because yeah. sometimes I feel like there's too much content, but at least I have more than enough to work with. And I just, I just start nice. scrolling through and I delete lines and it's all time stamped. Cause I do timestamp show notes anyway. Right. So I just, it, it, trust me, it's my new hack. I was like, ah, oh, it's awesome. Oh my gosh. So that, back to our, like, you know, on our, on our point of flow state. Yeah. Yes. That is great because I, people say like, everyone wants to run a marathon. Everyone write, wants to write a book. Okay. I've had, I've done, I've done both of those. So. Yeah. You've done both of them. I haven't done the book yet. I think we're similarly wired where we love to talk, but sitting down and writing, that is tricky. No. And that's an ADHD. I, I, I literally, By there's the no flow state there. I would, I would rather like take a hammer to my head. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but this is working. This is great that you can work around this. This is Well, cool. that was my, I literally, I, I, had, I heard about otter.ai. I think it was on the social media marketing podcast. I, that's one of my regular shows I listen to. And they, the, at the beginning of every episode, they have his, his one guy on his team will come on the show for just five minutes and talk about the latest app that he's found or played with, you know? Ooh. And that's how I heard about this. He's like, oh man, this is super cool. It voice yeah. transcribes, but they didn't bring up anything like I'm using it for. Like I figured out that I could use it to write a book. I figured out that I could use it on the podcast. They weren't bringing that up at all. So I was cracking up. This is so cool. This is so cool. Actually, speaking of books, um, one of the best things we've done, and actually the book, Make Time, Make Time Help Me Do This, is that my son and husband are writing their first book together. Oh. And yeah. Um, and how they've made time for it is usually my husband and I do dishes. And so I'm doing dishes by myself, put on a podcast, usually prepping for a future guest or like I listen to your podcast and they just type away. And then by the time I'm done with dishes, they've done a chapter and then they read it to me. And it's this beautiful time of them connecting you know. oh they're ahead of me then because at least there's somebody like listening to the content providing <laughs> some edits possibly or something like that like that's awesome like because once i finish editing i still have to give it to other people to edit so right right yeah it's really it's a really um it's been a really great thing in fact i'm going to reach out to the authors and make time because it's it's always fun to hear how your work has impacted someone in such a positive way. I think that's a great backstory. If they don't want to come on your show for that reason, that's huge. <laughs> because, I mean, it, on this whole point of flow state and making time for things, uh, back to the running point of view, you were just hinting at. Like, I ran my first marathon in 2008, the, the Marine Corps down in Washington. Oh, that was my first too. Oh, I see. There you go. All right. So... <laughs> Uh, we are a little geeking out now. Yeah, we so, are. Totally. And we're also fellow fans of the stainless steel drinking apparatus. Oh, Stop yes. Stop drinking out of plastic. Yes, 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 yes. So, Do you ever I mean, use a straw so you can drink even more water quickly? Actually, uh, Clean Canteen popped up on my Instagram ads today because uh, they're, they're doing a giveaway right now. Uh, like, a, like 12 days of Christmas, so every day they're doing a different bundle giveaway. And the bundle oh. today is like one of their canteens, a different canteen, and then a pack of those metal straws. Yeah, so, they're the best. Yeah, so I haven't gotten them yet, but that's huge because I thought, I, I figured somebody made stainless steel straws. And I've been trying to get my fiance to move off because she loves running. So I'm trying to move her off of the darn plastic bottles to have all yeah. the, little, the, the little flip top bite valves yeah. on them and everything. Those are good. Well, because Doc, <laughs> Not well, good for you, though. But, but Dr. Anthony J, besides him being a geneticist, he's the yeah. author of Estro Generation. So uh -huh. Estro Generation is a book about the impacts of plastics and other things on your hormone alignment, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Estro Generation, aka estrogen. So he yeah. talks all about the, the, the struggles between testosterone and estrogen. So it's huge. And he's anti plastic. So get it out of your life. Oh, I can imagine. I, yeah. I got to get him on the show. I can hook you up. I would love that. He's gone a couple times. And right now he's really trying to get some exposure because he's going to launch the first ever carnivore study. 
Interesting. Well, for we 90 are days, from, yeah. 90 days, you have to be 100% huh, you know, red, my friend, red meat, red meat. A friend of mine actually is doing that this week. She's doing just meat. No, I mean, so yeah, only, but this only red meat. Food. Yeah, only no, red that meat. Yeah. That means no eggs, Yeah. no butter, no alcohol, no, I, don't, I think he can't even have supplementation. He, because he's mm. going to measure... He's going to have you do a special swab test beforehand, and it'll it'll measure. Uh, they could do an analysis on the year. You ever hear of telomeres? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We, so, that was one of our books of the month. So yeah. he measures the length of your telomere before and then, because the, the kit comes with two swabs. And then at the end of the 90 days, you swab again. And he, he's the first person ever to consider doing a 100% carnivore study. Now, granted, it's not a paid study. Like This is for people who are passionate. And I, I'm... I'm, I'm so hardcore keto. I consume more red meat than I ever have. And I grew up that way. So I've kind of gone full circle back to my childhood when I grew up on a farm. And it's just interesting because I'm very fat adapted and I am an endurance athlete. I don't like to run as much anymore, but uh, <laughs> I've always been a huge cyclist. Uh, running took some work. Uh, but let's bring this full circle back though. The reason why I was going all down these different pikes was talking about the flow state and, the, and putting in the reps and making the time was I went from no running to doing a marathon. Wow. It's just not recommended. No, don't do it. <laughs> but I had to put in the reps and I didn't put in enough reps and injured my IT band while training for that first marathon yeah. because my buddy told me who was, yeah. who had already run it the year before and inspired me to do it with him the next year. Cause he was running in memory of one of his best friends who had died due to a uh, mistake by a hospital on his brain. Oh. Um, and, and, and so he was running in his memory. And I went down and I'm not a sidelines guy. I went down and watched him run like him and myself and some of the friends were like following him through the DC subways, to all the different stops, yeah. like cheer him on. And I was like, wait a minute, if he can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so, anyway. So he was busting on me because I did not start training early enough. You know, first time marathoner, I gave myself only three months to get ready. And you need a base. You can right. wing a half marathon, but winging a marathon. Well, I justified it because I was, I was already biking hundreds of miles and I was teaching spinning five days a week. So I was very fit. I was already in fitness. I was an instructor, but it was not, I wasn't dealing with the road trauma, as yeah. I like to call it, of the impact yeah. on yeah. the asphalt. So I learned real fast. And that's why to this day, I still support chiropractic and massage therapy as one of my key monthly influences in my life because of that right. exact reason. <laughs> You know, that's, um, what got, that's what got me ready for the marathon. So I have a similar story actually, where I wanted to run a half marathon. Someone talked me into, I'm like, this sounds like fun. And I was were at lifting weights and did some cardio, but the longest run I ever got to was four miles and a half marathon is 13.1. Mm -hmm. And the day before at the expo, someone looked at me and they're and they asked how much training I had done. And they're like, this is not good. I'm like, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And it wasn't that bad it, of a time. That's the actually. mental game. That's the mental game. It was. However, yep, that Achilles tendon because I hadn't yep. been training. That's, that's going to well, get you. See, interesting enough, it wasn't my Achilles. It was my IT. But oh, then you said that. years yeah. later, though, I did partially injure an Achilles on a half marathon of all things. So Yeah. <laughs> so, got it. An IT band, that's always my problem with running. Always, yeah. always, always. Well, also, and that was when I used to run traditional, well, I guess we really, depending on when you think about when running shoes were invented, is it traditional? Modern traditional running shoes. Now I'm a, I'm a minimalist. I, I run in Vibram five yeah. fingers. So like I, all the Spartan races I've done were in the Vibram five toe finger things. Wow. People, people look at me and are like, you're going to run up that mountain? In yeah. Those? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Have you checked out Osh, O-E-S-H? You got to check no. them out. Their founder was on my, my podcast. Um, I'm blanking on her name right now, but she's fascinating. She was in charge of the Harvard biomechanics lab. And then UVA recruited her to start the one UVA. Supposedly UVA is the best. So she mm. has OSH, O-E-S-H. Shoes made for women by women. Does it say that? Well, Yes. Okay, but okay, yes, okay. <laughs> However, um, they do go. have men who wear. They do have men who wear it. Um, yeah. I'm calling BS, and you're like, no, it's not BS. No, I mean, hold I on. They change that. Yes. Um, but but no, if you go back here wear, one second. Yeah. Um, again, listeners, I'm. Uh, this is always going to be on YouTube. I'm. I'm doing a video feed. 
But when I Googled just OESH right there, shoes made yeah. for women by women. Right you know there. what? Okay. So what happened when you said that first? I was thinking of Rika because back in the day, Rika, R-Y-K-A. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but um, yes, because they talk a lot about your joint health. And at first I did not care for these. I was having a hard time. But now when I go back to my old shoes, they feel like high heels compared to Osh. So yeah. um, they're very cushiony. And that is the big issue. Yeah. It's, it's these overly monstrosity of heels. Uh, they, exactly. They, and because actually this isn't exactly like a CrossFit shoe because obviously I'm huge in CrossFit, but our CrossFit shoes have a very standardized flat firm sole. There's no, the only time you see an increased heel is if you get a, um, a lifting shoe or for Olympic lifting because mm. you're hitting such a massive squat depth that some people need that lifted shoe uh, for the range of motion as your, as your hips open and you drop down with a, with a load of weight over you, uh, that lifter, lifter shoe is nice. But again, that's not a spongy heel. That's a firm right, right, raised yeah. heel. It's, it has a purpose. So, You know, when you get down to this neck of the woods, you have to try something called Balanced Athlete. It is similar to CrossFit. However, I believe way better because you are actually in your bare feet and they're not all about quantity. They're about quality. Oh, I wear my Vibrams CrossFitting. Yeah. I feel, I feel like yeah. We, we're like all when I started feet. cross when I, when I, I learned CrossFit out West when I was firefighting. And then when I moved back, I obviously stayed obsessed with it because I became a certified trainer and I was still wearing my Vibram five fingers because I learned about Vibram five fingers when I was living in Arizona and on my days off from firefighting, I would go trail running. And I, I read the book, Born to Run. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to try this. And obviously, my feet were killing me in the beginning. But then all of a You're sudden, fine. my, my yeah. feet get stronger. My dexterity. I mean, I could bound up a mountain in no time. It was crazy. So I'm a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> But if you're in this neck of the woods, you got to try balance athlete. Try and balance athlete. So, well, I mean, let's be real. CrossFit did the biggest explosion in marketing and there's been so many spinoffs, right? So nowadays everybody calls things, for example, HIT, high intensity interval training, HIIT. It's a variation of it. CrossFit's a brand name. It's that's right. what it is. So the point is that the one thing I love about CrossFit or when HIT is properly trained is that you should be able to take an athlete out of any of those classes if they've been doing it a while and plug them into almost any sport. That's the point. You're supposed to be a well-rounded person. Yeah. So, Question then people pick a people pick a niche often. Like, right. You know. So CrossFit, I did it 11 years ago, and at the time. Oh, that was in its start. Yeah, yeah. it was early days. I didn't start until two th late or early 2010. Yeah. So. so I is it still, at least what they had is they'd have this board work out of the day and it would be like, do a hundred pushups. And if someone's like, what hundred pushups, what are you nuts? They'd say, Oh, just break it down. And then meanwhile, everyone would have to wait for that person. And then by the time they get to probably 20, their form is crap. But meanwhile, everyone's waiting for them. Is that yeah. still what goes done? Yeah. It's not supposed no, to be, uh, no, on Sundays, I, I, my gym, I used to coach at, I'm friends with the owners. I still go back there. Um, in Bethlehem, they, uh, shout out to CrossFit Adoration. They um they do a hero wad every Sunday. So we do a, a so over the years they've been around long enough that when a fallen veteran, police, fire, military doesn't matter when somebody falls in the line of duty, um and they were big into CrossFit. Usually their colleagues or friends submit their name and their favorite workout to CrossFit to get recognized and it gets named after that person. Aww, so nice. usually a hero's wad is much more intense yeah. to back up what you just said the whole hundred push-ups thing you, you might see that in that programming so yeah, uh, yeah but no i mean in the end it doesn't matter what sport this is it doesn't have to be crossfit a quality form of fitness is going to have well at least in the crossfit world you're going to have a great community a lot of supportive people a yeah. lot of you know people cheering you on that's why i love it. that's one of the things i biggest things i like people don't think about the community aspect that's huge it is. but more importantly back to the sport is that you want to have great training great coaching great programming that's huge that's huge yeah, you, again to your point in the beginning they were still figuring it out so people just thought back in the day that crossfit's supposed to be intense all the time well no maybe that class was but also it's the coach's responsibility to check and see if you have a new athlete they're not ready to do 100 push-ups no. or I'm going to scale their push-up position because form and technique is so important. So those are, that goes back to the importance of the coach. Okay. Are they, are they 
interviewing every single athlete in that class? Are they familiar with who's new and who's more experienced? So, I mean, I've had my shoulder rebuilt twice over the years. So from ski crashes, so I can't do a hundred pushups unbroken. I do, I do cycles of 20, like boom, 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 boom. I can do 20, shake it back out, loosen everything back up, do another 20 and I'll, I'll get them through. I got, I know there's a guy I used to coach. He'll do a hundred unbroken, just straight through. I'm like, dude, you belong in the Marine Corps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, by the way, I got to get you hooked up. Okay. So I got to hook you up with, oh, I got to write this down. Dr. I have Dr. Anthony. Dr. J. I'm going to check out otter.ai, my new favorite app. It sounds like. I got to get you. Oh yeah. Uh, otter.ai. And we're going to take my, I'm going to take my son to Bear Creek. There you go. To learn how to ski. Um, I need to get the 23 and me, but not get, and only get. Buy the, the cheap college. one and then, then reach out yeah. to Dr. J. Because uh, actually, that's what we did. He and I did a live, a Facebook live podcast. Oh, so I, 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 I yet. you could do it through Zoom. Um, you could actually dial, I could launch Zoom right through Facebook and go live. It's cool. So um, you have to pay for it, but it's, it's cool. So, mm -hmm. but actually back to, oh, flow state. So two guys I got to get you hooked up with way back in the day, author and engineer, Julian Kaufman, I had him back on episode 55. Mm -hmm. And this guy is right up your alley because he wrote a book called Let It Flow. Oh, that's cool. Because he was like an electrical engineer. So he understands current and electricity yeah. and flow. And he tied it into what you and I are talking about, you know, human energy and flow state. Uh, it's a great book, by the way. So oh, I recommend him for you. Yeah. And then... That. My husband's an electrical engineering. engineering. Oh, that, yeah, you, you guys would geek out. And then, yeah. are you familiar with Jerry Gara? No. So he's up in New England. Uh, he and I geek out about flow state all the time. He's been on the show a couple of times. So I got to hook you up with Jerry. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing. I geek out about flow because of positive psychology and being in the state and really being where things feel right to you. And, and going back to what you were saying about CrossFit and having a community people don't understand how important a sense of belonging in a community is. I had no idea. And they're showing that if you're lonely, you're like better off smoking 15 cigarettes than being lonely and not having that community. I think it's, I think it's wonderful how CrossFit has this community and runners have it. And it comes down to knowing yourself best. And Oh, the running community is strong. I mean, yes. Uh, my, my fiance just started work uh, training recently again with uh, a runner's group and she loved it. So, cause she, she runs anyway, she doesn't care. So it's like, why not, you know, build a little group behind it. So absolutely. But, and that, and uh, cause I, I only, I only minored in psychology while I was doing my marketing degree. I considered going complete dual major, but they said, Hey Scott, you can graduate now. Um, and he's like, so unless you're going PhD and I was an adult student when I was doing this. Uh, so mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, I got way more other things to do you know, in my thirties. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm out. <laughs> give me, give me a piece of paper. So I'm not getting extra credit points here, but so I got enough psychology to help me understand that I I'm obsessed with it and I love it. Yeah. And it is true. Basic mankind, basic human interaction is crucial. I've talked about building influential relationships on this show and networking. And I know you could back this up because you're a fellow obsessed person about psychology. Mm -hmm. Like we are meant to grow connectivity and interact with people. The basic human we trait. We are. It's it's key. We're and we're meant to move. It's move and belong. Um, a book I think you would love, um, and someone you might want to. He's writing a book right now, but when he's done writing another book, is uh, Dr. John Rady. He is the foremost authority about what exercise does for the brain. He wrote the book Spark. He's also an expert in ADHD. Oh, I know Spark. Yeah. Yeah. So he wrote Spark, and he's been on the podcast a number of times. And he wrote a book. It's one of my top three most influential books in my life called Go Wild. And he looks at the six crucial things that you need to have in your life. And I've really applied this. And then I believe there's a seventh, but he talks about being- Wait, what is that called? It's called, go here, I'll- Because I, I, I can Google it right now. Yeah, Go Wild, free your body and mind from the afflictions of modern civilization. That subtitle may have changed. But it basically says, here are six key things to focus on to live a, a healthy life. And so, of course, there are things we know, exercise, uh, nutrition, sleep, 
Okay. Look, oh, okay. They did change the subtitle. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sharing this on the video feed. So, uh, but obviously they, they t the subtitle here is uh, eat fat, which I love. I'm fat adapted. Um, run free, get outside, get outdoors, get, the, get off the track. <laughs> yes. But run free in many, many different ways. Be social. We just talked about it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, follow Ele evolution's other rules for total health and well-being. So that's a very broad statement. I'm sure he digs much more into that mm -hmm. uh, on here. But one thing I, when you said there's six things, right? I was I was wondering if you were hinting at because when I studied psychology, I've brought this up on the show multiple times. We talk about the the essential domains that we must balance in our life, and or just always be focusing on because throughout life. Your, your ability to focus in certain domains is always going to shift, right? It, like, for example, yeah. if you're in college, your, your educational goal domain is obviously much higher. You're heavily focused on that uh, or partying, one or the other. But <laughs> <laughs> we don't really put partying on the domain. Maybe that can fall under social. So, but there's like the average six domains are usually family, friends, uh, obviously education, career or your, your business or whatever, uh, love and those closer relationships. And then for some people it's uh, spirituality or faith, right. right? So, but he's like, you know, I learned it this way. My, my professor, he's like, listen, take a zero access, right? Line up those domains like a bar graph and then take an assessment of where you're at. And he's like, you don't have to go crazy. Maybe put it plus three, minus three, right? And then rank it. Say, where are you at? Okay. He said, most people, I'm not always going to say, well, I'm plus three across the board on all six domains. No, Come on. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, but he said, what you really want to concern with is, is making sure not more than half of those domains are far below the zero access. If you allow too many of those domains yeah. to drop, he's like, that's when stress levels increase, life balance is thrown off. There's so many negative side effects to that. So I'm not sure if anybody, any, anybody ever put that to you in that visual standpoint. Yeah, there's the classic wheel of life that I think every, every self-development um, conference you ever go to or class where you have your wheel and then you have your different spokes and then- Yeah, so there's um, all different graphics for these yeah, things. But yeah, but yeah, basically checking in. So I just wanted to close the loop on the six things. So it's exercise and nutrition um, and sleep. And then it's being outside- uh, mind meditation, which I finally got into a meditation routine after. I am still struggling to keep consistent. Uh, you know, we're all you know we're all different on that. We're just different yeah, places in the timeline. Yeah, but I'm still working on it. I, I had multiple attempts. What was the game changer for me was getting uh, trained in uh, transcendental meditation (TM). Ooh, okay. Oh, well, there you go. That was the game changer. I tried many other ways, but yeah, TM's yeah, it's great. Wait a minute. Well, real quick side note, are you reading these from the Go Wild uh, checklist? Those were the six, yeah. Okay. What I just said, yeah, those are their six. And then I, I believe there's a seventh one, and that's all around, it's all around your mindset, and that's well, the whole positive psychology part. What I love is the for, in, in the forward, he's got freaking uh, David Perlmutter in here. Oh, yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. He, no. well, one, one of the domains you mentioned was eating fat, right? And D David Perlmutter is yeah, green brain. It's all about that, yeah. Oh, I, that was one of my first uber healthy books that I ever went geeked out about. Like yeah. I'm more, I'm more of a fan of Perlmutter than I am a, a, a wheat belly, right? I love grain brain. It's just people do not understand the inflammatory impacts on a healthy brain. Yeah. It's hard. It's, I eat like this, but I'd be lying if I said my son and my husband didn't eat bread. Well, no, I, I'm yeah. hardcore. My fiance thinks I'm crazy too. You know, so well, it's, I know it's crazy, but you know what? I think the beauty, I mean, it takes crazy like, people to change the world. <laughs> And, and we, we show up and be the best version of ourselves. And we, yeah. affect, we set an example. We, effect. Yeah. we set an example. You don't know who you're affecting. And, and kudos to the listener and to the viewer here for taking their time to learn about some new things. I mean, they could be watching Saturday Night Live right now or exactly. something else. Yes. I mean, we've been going here for almost an hour. Actually, that's a good check-in on time because we do have to uh, shut down the, uh, the fire off a show for your show. Uh, which again, ladies and gentlemen, let me do a little screen sharing again here. Uh, but again, you want to check her out. There we go. Videos up the running lifestyle.com. I like the fact you have a book club on here too, by the way. So oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank How long you. have you had the book club on there? Oh gosh. Um, since January, 2015. In fact, go wild was the first book. Get out. Uh, yeah. Get and out. you want to hear a funny story? I got to tell you this story. Yeah, go ahead. And this is such the gift of podcasting is 
I had on a friend who basically was like, yeah, you've got ADHD too. And I did get diagnosed ADHD and with it. And I said, to, he was on the podcast. His name was Eric Tivers. This podcast is ADHD Rewired. And I said, Eric, when you don't feel like exercising, what do you do? And he said, I turned to the book Spark by Dr. John Rady. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. So I learned about Spark. So then I reached out to Dr. Rady. I read his books about ADHD. I'm like, you've changed my life. Can you come on the podcast? He's like, sure. And long story short, short, I was like, well, he probably wants to talk about his latest book, which is Go Wild. So I guess I'll read it. But I didn't really want to read it at first because of actually Dr. Perlmutter's um, endorsement because I feel like a bad mom that my son eats bread and my husband. <laughs> and, and so I'm like, oh my gosh. But I'm like, okay, but he probably wants to talk about this. And it's a game changer of a book. Like I am his biggest fan. Like I have a serious professional crush on Dr. Reedy. It's okay to have a professional crush. I geek okay. out on a few guys I, I know and, and ladies. You know, I got I got male and female crushes. Who are your Who are your professional crushes? Oh, it depends. So obviously, my <laughs> client and inspiration behind Anna Vicino is Vinny Tortorich. So he's the trade he trademarked NSNG, no sugar, no grains. So I mean, that that guy is huge, and, and he's and he's now now actually one of my clients, which is awesome. So uh, I was like, I've been following his show and tweeting his show forever because he, I just love him. He's just, he's very brazen. He's laid back. It's Vinny, man. He's awesome. Uh, but he's a big influencer. You know, he dropped off for a while and kind of raised back up again. But if you if you cut out all the bulletproof BS from Dave Asprey, I love his new the new uh, head game book. The head uh, the he's very big on mental health and yes, he yes, did a great job bringing to light. Uh, his own struggles over the years with uh, people underestimate the impacts of mold in your home and everything else. Yeah. And he's, a big, I, I mean, and he's done a great job. I, I, I don't, I no longer call the coffee bulletproof coffee cause I know he's making money off of that. So I just call it fatty coffee cause I drink fat. I drink fat coffee all the time. So again, back to those plants on healthy fats. So those are just two, just, uh, I guess, modern online health influencers that I always like yeah. to share with people. And then people like Dr. Anthony J, Estro Generation, yeah. uh, his new carnivore study. So obviously I geek on health. Mm -hmm. Even though on this show, we talk a lot about business and lifestyle too. So yeah. No, yeah it's, fun. Fun. It's, it's pretty cool when you, when you meet, um, <laughs> you meet your, like, your, your hero that I try not to go fangirl, but I just, I, I kind of feel like when I get to meet them, um, like I got to ask Brene Brown a question and yeah. That's or, moment with, uh, somebody yeah. else is really powerful for me is uh, Richard Branson. Like, I don't agree with his vegan lifestyle choices right now, but I, he's a big influencer for me and in everything he's gone through with his business and his entrepreneurship and just the lifestyle he portrays, the virgin way. I've always been inspired by that, right? And so it's not, just, it's not just about the health nuttiness, right? It's also about what are people doing to change the world and do things differently. Yeah. So. And he has ADHD also. So oh, they, God, yeah. Yeah. They say, people, all over they say people with ADHD, um, companies, they're, they're three times, they have, it's three to one for entrepreneurs who have ADHD who have business, you know, have their own businesses versus ones who don't. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> well, I've been, <laughs> it till I've been not officially it. diagnosed, but I've had many people tell me that oh, I just, I always have, I, I, but again, here's the thing. It's what you do with it. It's Absolutely. Not, it's not, it and it's not it yeah. Focus. I mean, there's some scary stats against it about about our lifespan, but you know what? It, you accept it, you're compassionate towards it, and you make it work for you. Yeah. No shame. I didn't choose this. <laughs> you know, I explained a lot of my childhood when I got diagnosed, but it's like, how can I make it work for me? It's like anything else in life. Listen, we're all given a deck of cards. Uh, it's all been dealt out. So you could just accept it and then complain about it forever, or you could accept it and do something with it, okay? And we all have a choice, so... Bingo. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I want to make sure we get some time to do your show. So uh, you being our newest guest co-host, our guest co-host closed the show out uh, besides my normal closeout. So what are some final words that you want to leave behind for our audience who chose to hang this long with us yeah. instead, instead of watching the boob tube TV? Uh, yes. but yeah, let's, uh, let, let's, let's help close them out with some, I don't know, whatever you want, your energy. What do you got? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for, again, for bringing me on. I've enjoyed our, our, our conversation. I feel like we've talked about so many different topics. And I We're hope so that, much closer now. You know? Yes. Yes. We've had this sharing, this joy of sharing people that have influenced us and connections. And I just really want, um, to share that, in, this is coming from a, a mom 
and you know, all of us have things going on is that to really honor, this is why I say that in my podcast is to honor yourself because you're the most important person, you know, Mm. and Yes. I mean, of course we get to interview, I shouldn't say of course, but we have the opportunity to interview some big names and they're great. Um, that doesn't mean you're not great and that you're not important. You Ooh, know, and I think, point. I think it's really time to, to be with that. And then also honor, like, you know what, if this doesn't work for me, it's, it's, it's okay to be okay with it. And to know that when you set boundaries for the first time, it can be hard, but play the long game. And I think really when you honor yourself and really say like, okay, I'm the most important person. I, that doesn't make me a bad mom. It actually makes me a better mom because I'm going to make sure that I'm taking care of myself so I can be a better mom. Um, I, when I see, when I see the t-shirts that are like tired mom, give me the coffee. Like I just, I, 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 I get it, but I don't get it. I will let you weigh in on that one. I, I, that's all you. That's all you. Because I, I, I'm not a mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I no, agree with I that. Would... We're all, again, you, you made a valid point. What I just said too, right, is, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we all have a choice in how we deal with everything. And if you always dwell on the negative, you're not setting yeah. a great example. Yeah. yeah. There's a mom in my balance athlete class. She's the greatest t-shirt. It's the emblem of... Um, Starbucks with the woman and the woman's like shredding her muscles. Nice. Like I'd rather see that shirt yeah. instead of the, I'm a tired mom. Give me the coffee. I agree with that because like that, that'd be like me complaining about being a podcaster or being a CrossFit coach or trying to like balance my time, my schedule. I'm like, well, Scott, you chose to make these commitments. So why are you complaining about it? So for example, yeah. Those ladies or men who chose to be mothers or fathers, yeah. you cho- for most of you chose, most of you chose to be a mother or father, which I respect. I, I want nothing to do with it. I love being the cool <laughs> uncle. My fiance and I will never reproduce. Okay, we took care of that before we even put a ring on it. We cl- clippity clipped. Okay, so I I respect that. Like, listen, we are we knew to make sure that we would be selfish. So we could free up that time in our lives to do other things like we're doing here. So I always respect people like you who are also a mom and also creating podcasts and, you know, looking to uh, launch a book like your, your husband and your son are doing like, that's huge. That's huge. So kudos to you guys. So. I know how I'm going to introduce you or introduce this conversation on my podcast. Uh oh, I gave you that some good material. Out there. Wait until the end. <laughs> I told you I don't hold. You won't I don't get hold the back. point. <laughs> I have. I, I I can thank this show in over two years of being on air and over two hundred and thirty some odd shows now online. It's like just listen. I am I am transparent. I'm not going to hold anything back. So I think I owe that to my audience. I think it sets an example to help people. So I'm not saying you need to start walking around telling everybody everything about your life. I right. mean, ease into it. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I believe it. I want to make sure that I, one of my old mentors said a long time ago, he's like, listen, if you want to succeed in life, remain approachable. Like don't cold shoulder people. Yeah. Don't create the roadblocks. Remain approachable. And one of the best ways to give off that approachability is to be more transparent I and like not put on this fake persona. Yeah. So amen, brother. Again, we got to be able to live in these flow states. How are we, how are you and I supposed to flow like we did tonight? If I wasn't being more open and approachable. So exactly. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All there right. Well, so hang tight. I'm gonna give you a proper goodbye off the air and then we'll transition for your show. Ladies and gentlemen, I said it multiple times, the running lifestyle.com. Please go subscribe to her show. And again, it's not just about running. You might pick up on it. There's a lot more underlying principles coming through on her show. So again, thanks for tuning in to another powerful Live the Fuel show. I reminded you at the beginning of this episode, uh, please hook me up with some reviews. I want to be able to read your stuff on air. I want to know if we're doing a good job. And there's a lot of people out there that need to find this great content and people like Carrie. So again, thanks for tuning in. We're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. And we'll talk to you guys again soon.